We start with the resignation of Andrew Cuomo, and we end up with a 1981 communist terrorist attack. Yeah, crazy story, isn't it? You see, Andrew Cuomo, the governor, is officially out, and Hochul has finally replaced him, the first female governor of New York, apparently. And before Andrew Cuomo left, he tried to give away his dog or something. I don't care, whatever. He also commuted the sentence of a communist terrorist who was involved in the 1981 Brinks robbery that left three people dead. This is, I'll just put it this way. If you were looking for some kind of indication that there were communist interests in control of government, I'm not saying controlling all of the government, but certainly infiltrating and gaining control, you need only look at what's going on right now. Chesa Bowden in San Francisco, this is his father, a terrorist, and he was raised by his adoptive father, Bill Ayers of the Weather Underground. Other terrorists. So here we are. This is the news. So let me take you down this path from Cuomo resigning into what exactly happened with the Brinks terror attack and or I should say the Brinks robbery specifically and where that leads us now in San Francisco with escalating crime and a failure of Chesa Bowden as the DA. But is it any surprise when this is who people vote for? From TimCast.com, goodbye Cuomo. Governor has left office. Hochul replaces him. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul took Cuomo's place after she was sworn in at a midnight ceremony conducted by the state's chief judge, Janet DeFiore. Moving vans were spotted outside the governor's mansion over the weekend. Cuomo, who resigns two weeks ago, who resigned two weeks ago, reportedly left his dog, Captain, behind. (laughs) What? Okay. Captain is the Husky Shepherd Malamut mix Cuomo adopted in 2018. A spokesman told the Times Union of Albany that he was only seeking a temporary placement for the dog. Mr. Cuomo resigned rather than face impeachment over allegations of harassment. And we we get it. As Governor Cuomo proclaimed himself a progressive Democrat who gets things done. Since taking office in 2011, he helped push through legislation that legalized gay marriage, began lifting the minimum wage to $15, and expanded paid family leave benefits. He also backed big infrastructure projects, including a new Hudson River Bridge, blah, blah, blah. In his final act, Cuomo granted clemency to six people. They, they go on to mention uh, Hochul is a 62-year-old Democrat and former member of Congress from the Buffalo area. She'll be the state's 57th governor as well as its first female. But here's where the rage comes in. In the Daily Mail, Cuomo is condemned for commuting sentences of five murderers, including father of radical left-wing San Francisco DA, Chesa Bowden, who killed three in 1981 Brinks cash truck robbery. It was an overt communist terrorist organization. And Cuomo has granted clemency. The Daily Mail reports, outgoing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has been blasted by victims groups for commuting the murder sentence of San Francisco DA Jessup Bowden's dad over an armored car robbery that killed three. Cuomo announced Monday evening that he was commuting the prison sentences of David Gilbert, Greg Mingo, Robert Ehrenberg, Ulysses Boyd, and Paul Clark. All five have murder convictions with Gilbert, Bowden's father, the only killer still incarcerated with no possibility of parole over a deadly 1981 holdup of a Brinks crash, uh, a Brinks cash truck that left a security guard and two cops dead. He served as a gateway driver, a getaway driver for the crime, with Cuomo saying Monday his crime related to an incident in which he was the driver, not the killer. Spare me. Gilbert was convicted of three counts of second degree murder in 1983 over the killings. With Cuomo's commutation, meaning his 75-year minimum sentence has been lowered to 40 years time served. Although Cuomo said he had commuted Bowden's sentence, he added that the case has been referred to the parole board for potential release, meaning he will not be freed immediately. Cuomo ordered the release of the other four men whose sentences he also commuted. Bowden shared his joy on Twitter upon learning about his father's commutation, writing, and here's the tweet, my heart is bursting. On the eve of my first child's birth, my dad, who has been in prison nearly my entire life, was granted clemency. He never intended harm, yet his crime devastated many families. My heart breaks for the families that can never get their loved ones back. Pinned tweet from Chesa Bowden. Now, naturally, Chesa is getting absolutely roasted on Twitter. Now, I can certainly empathize with the man who is saying that he's going to finally see his father out of prison. But this guy is not some random getaway driver for some random crime. This was overt, uh, an overt act of political terror. 
And it wasn't the first that his, his father had been involved in, because my understanding, and, and we'll go through all the details, was that his dad was a part of the Weather Underground. Now, over back at the Daily Mail, they say, the clemency, uh, re- re- the clemency was received with backlash from elected officials in Rockland and, and family of the victims. The Rockland County Patrolman's Benevolent Association has, op- has opposed previous attempts for clemency of clemency for Gilbert. State Assemblyman Michael Lawler said the commutation was a disgusting betrayal to the people of Rockland County. The families of Peter Pegier, Edward O'Grady, and Waverly Brown, the law enforcement officers and law enforcement officers everywhere. And Rockland County Executive Ed Day had even harsher words for Cuomo, accusing the governor of debasing his office. He told Lohud, I did not think that Cuomo could debase his office or his state any more than he did. My thoughts are with the families of the victims of the Brinks robbery and every person of Rockland County who has insulted, uh, by, who was insulted by the governor today. This October will mark the 40th anniversary of the 1981 Brinks robbery in which Gilbert and his wife, Kathy Bowden, were involved. Gilbert's wife, Kathy Bowden, was also involved in the incident and served as a lookout at the moment two of her accomplices shot the two police officers dead. She struck a plea deal that saw her admit felony murder in exchange for a 20-year sentence and was released in 2003. She is now an adjunct professor at Columbia University School of Social Work in New York. Are you paying attention to the people that are teaching your children, that are taking charge as district attorney? They are terrorists, criminals, and murderers. And while you weren't paying attention, these people infiltrated and were given power. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. These are not the things that we want kids to, to uh, learn and, and believe in. It's, it's, it's horrifying. You want to come to me and say the government has done wrong and they violate the rights of people. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, that definitely. There's a ton of things the government has done, the U.S. government specifically, and different states. There's, there's hor- are you t- I'll tell you the stories about Chicago with the, 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 the black sites they operate where they torture people into false confessions. Yeah, I'll buy it. Then when you step up and say that we're going to fight for freedom and you murder innocent people, you are just as bad as the despots you claim to oppose because it is always the innocent who suffer when psychopaths like this think they deserve the power and they can just take whatever they want. And now they're gaining the power because regular people sat back and ignored the world for too long. And you see what happens now? They're teaching your children. They're prosecuting crimes or not prosecuting crimes. Scrolling down, there's more and more photos. The heist which uh, landed him in jail started at the Nanuit Mall in upstate New York when security guard Peter Page was also killed during the robbery. His colleague Joseph Trombino was seriously wounded, later died in the 9-11 terror attacks. Man, that's a career. Let me, let me bring you to the 1981 Brinks robbery and tell you what, what, what we'll just read through this. It's, it's Wikipedia. I'm not going to pretend like it's the greatest source in the world. But let me explain to you exactly who was just commuted. The 1981 Brinks robbery was an armed robbery and three related murders committed on October 20th, 1981, which were carried out by six Black Liberation Army members, Matulu Shakur, Kuwasi Balagoon, Solomon Boynes, Samuel Brown, Matiyari, Shabaka, Sundiata, Edward Joseph, and Chewy Ferguson, and four former members of the Weather Underground, now belonging to the main 19th communist organization, David Gilbert, Judith Alice Clark, Kathy Bowden, and Marilyn Buck. They stole $1.6 million in cash from a Brinks armored car at the Nanuit Mall in Nanuit, New York, killing a Brinks guard, Peter Page, seriously wounding Brinks guard Joseph Trombino, slightly wounding Brinks truck driver guard James Kelly, subsequently killing two Nyack police officers, Edward O'Grady and Waverly Brown, and seriously wounding police detective Artie Keenan. Trombino recovered from the wounds he received in the incident, but was killed in 2001 in the September 11th attacks. Perpetrators, the main 19th communist organization. For political reasons, they sought to steal money. They are terrorists. And this is what you get now. Sentence commuted. Now, look, the dude's extremely old. All right. David Gilbert is currently 76 years old and he, uh, well, he wasn't supposed to be getting out anytime soon. I'll tell you this. I certainly think 
keeping elderly people in prison serves very little purpose other than to waste our money, I guess. And the dude's 76. I don't know exactly what he's going to be doing that he can't already be doing. I suppose you have him on watch because maybe he could plan other, you know, terroristic activities. 76 years old, man, not long for this world. So in terms of releasing people who are older or imprisoning people who commit crimes who are older, it's tough. We can't just let old people go commit crimes. It's like, oh, they're 80. We're going to do imprison them, I guess. But there's at least something we can do. Maybe what, what, what really serves the interest of justice is after a certain age, you get placed on you, in a home. And depending on the crime, obviously, if you're a violent offender, yeah, we lock you up. And so someone like David Gilbert, you don't want to let out. You don't. And that, that, that's, that's kind of the point, right? The point I'm trying to make is there are a lot of people who probably shouldn't be in prison. I think a prison system is broken and it's very, very stupid. There are a lot of people who are innocent who end up in prison. And that's a damn shame. We always have to err on the side of, the, of protecting the innocent. However, in this instance, David Gilbert is the one is, is the one type of person you don't want to release. Now they say, oh, but but, you know, he didn't ha- intend to harm anybody. He was just a getaway driver. You build a machine together that causes harm. Oh, but we, we just built the machine. The machine did it. No, sorry. You were part of the operation. They, they were armed. You knew they were armed. You knew what they could intend. You were providing support for them to commit these acts that they would not have been able to uh, uh, pull off without their getaway driver. If David Gilbert said, I will not drive for you, perhaps the operation never would have happened. But he decided he wanted to provide that material support. And in the commission of a felony, people were murdered. And that means you. Of all the people to be released, how about people who are charged with like, I don't know, pot charges? I was saying all throughout last year, Donald Trump should just get grant clemency and commute and pardon all nonviolent drug offenders at the federal level, so long as they didn't plead down from violent offenses. So it's like somebody, you know, drug offenses, you're gone, you go home, you have a nice day. Instead, this is what we get. Of all, of all the people, a communist terrorist, amazing. Let me show you the man's son, Chesa Bowden. He's an American lawyer. He served in the 20, as a 29th district attorney of San Francisco since January 8, 2020. He has previously served as deputy public defender of San Francisco. Let's take a look at uh, uh, relatives of Mr. Bowden. Bill Ayers, weather underground. Bernadine Dorn, underground. Louis B. Bowden, his great, great grand uncle. Leonard Bowden, Michael Bowden, etc. You get the point. David Gilbert and Kathy Bowden are his parents. He was a child of communist terrorists. But my friends, I will not condemn a man for the sins of the father. I'm not here to rag on Chesa Bowden for what his dad did. Absolutely not. I'm here to point out that the apple doesn't fall, fall too far from the tree. And I will certainly not condemn a person for the actions of their parents. I know many people who have bad parents and they, and they lead great lives. So in that respect, I 100% will defend Chesa Bowden. A lot of people attacked him simply because of who his parents are. And I want to make sure it's clear that I don't care who his parents are. I'm concerned about who he's raised by. But again, his actions are his actions, not anyone else's. It just so happens that his actions are very bad. Because while I can absolutely state for the millionth time, I will not condemn Chesa Bowden for what his dad did. He didn't even know his dad. He was a baby. Or his mom. He was a, he was a baby and was adopted. I'll show you what you get when you, when you, uh, when you vote for someone like him. Because it was obvious that, you know, with the policies that he espoused, that the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. And given the opportunity, you can see now that perhaps operating outside the system was a bad strategy. Now you've got someone operating inside the system and you got to pay attention to this stuff. I'll put it this way. If someone comes out and says that they're, you know, it turns out their dad was a really, really bad person. I'd be like, well, let me hear what you have to say, because I'm not going to blame you for what your parents did. You know, the sins of the father. I'm not going to transfer that to you. And so if they said, look, I believe in freedom and I believe in justice and accountability. And that means we can't just let criminals go. But it also means we need to protect the innocent. I'd be like, I dig it. If they come out and they say they're far left, just like the, their, their parents, or if they were like, oh, yeah, I agree with a lot of their same ideology. I'd be like, yeah, that's a red flag. That is definitely a red flag. From Fox News. San Francisco DA faces second recall effort as residents fed up with progressive zero consequence policies. They say a second recall effort launched against District Attorney Chesa Bowden demonstrates how residents are fed up with his progressive policies 
as his push to reduce jail funding and refusal to prosecute repeat offenders ensures the streets remain marred with open air drug dealing and violent crime now stretching into the suburbs. A leader of the prominent local police union tells Fox News. Last week, the first Republican backed recall effort uh, fell just 1,714 signatures short of the required of the signatures required to trigger a special election to bring the question of ousting Bowden before voters. Now a second recall effort is being organized, which Bowden brushed off Monday, uh, Monday night as proof that his so-called successes in reducing incarceration has angered the billionaire class. Listen to these people. They tell you who they are. The billionaire class. What billionaire class? You think Jack Dorsey's marching around complaining about uh, over incarceration? Uh, I'm sorry, under incarceration? You think you, Mark Zuckerberg and his other billionaires are like, just a Bowden should, should stop? Or do you think they're usually just like either nihilistic or leftist? I think based on what we've seen, YouTube is more likely than ever to not oppose Chesa Bowden. He's on, he's, he's on their side. The billionaire class. I'm sorry, do the Koch brothers live in San Francisco? I can't imagine a lot of conservative billionaires living in that area. No, it goes to show you that regular people are fed up. They want their lives back. They're tired of human feces littering the streets. They're tired of the homeless problems. And I'm not blaming the homeless for being homeless. I'm blaming the government for not finding adequate solutions. The solutions are hard. I'll tell you this because I understand the homeless problem. But what about refusing to prosecute people who are shoplifting? What about all the videos we see people walking in, just stealing stuff and walking out? The apple didn't fall far from the tree in this instance. I'm always careful to make sure we're not going to blame someone for the sins of the father or mother, whatever. You get the point. But at this point, Joseph Bowden has showed us his colors. He's shown us, it's red, by the way. He's shown us exactly what he wants and intends to do, and it's been a disaster. Unfortunately, they were just short of the signatures they needed to get a recall. They'll try again. They say, his progressive approach, that's, uh, but, but it's his progressive approach is actually hurting average San Franciscans. San Francisco Police Officers Association President Tony Montoya tells Fox News, as Bowden's swiftest revolving door in criminal justice sends the message to offenders that there are no consequences for their actions. Police are the bad guys and the bad guys are the good guys in the minds of a progressive, Montoya said. Chess is good at the blame game. We're going to call him Mr. Deflector because he's always pointing the finger left or right and never at the man in the mirror. The perception out there is that is that are zero consequence. There are zero consequences for illegal or bad behavior. They know if they get caught, they'll run out sooner than it takes an officer to write their police report. Rather than the politicians becoming numb to it, I think they're in denial. They are flat out in denial that it's occurring. It's not secret we have an open air drug market. Open air drug markets and homelessness, coupled with upticks in blatant daylight shoplifting, residential and commercial burglaries, shootings, and other violent crimes, have left citizens starting to wake up to the reality that's now become their nightmare as far as public safety and crime goes. Walgreens shutting down stores, Target reducing hours. A story about an elderly man who used to walk a block to get his medication now has to walk six because the stores are closing because crime is through the roof. At a certain point, you'd think people would say enough, but therein lies the big problem. People don't care. They literally don't care. How do you get someone like Chesa Bowden in office in the first place? People don't care. So when he steps up and you can see exactly who he is and what he represents, regular people just say, I don't know. And the progressive zealots and the communists and the socialists, they say, this is our guy. And they like the chaos. They do. They want to tear the system down so that they can propose the real solutions. The only problem with their plan is that we're watching you tear the system down, dude. You're the DA. It's your fault. Why would I trust you to fix it? It'll just result in a backlash. And people will go for some, you know, right wing or even a far right, whatever that means, uh, prosecutor who will then, you know, drop the hammer. Moving on up from San Francisco, we can see what's happening with Gavin Newsom. It's neck and neck. He may actually get recalled. Of course, there's some interesting goings on pertaining to that election. And if he does get recalled, it seems Larry Elder may end up being the governor. There may be a major reaction to people saying enough of the corrupt and spineless who are purposefully destroying our towns, our state, so that they can empower themselves and push a political ideology. The terrorists have infiltrated the system and they are. You look at what he's doing, letting these criminals go. Is that, is that improving the lives of anybody? No. 
it's almost like the state is engaging in acts of terror. It's anarcho tyranny. That they'll, I'll tell you this, you better believe that if you're in San Francisco and you arm yourself to protect yourself against the crime, oh, they will arrest and charge you. But if you're a shoplifter or a mugger or a criminal, nah, you're free to go. Heaven forbid you're a working class individual who says, I just want to be safe. I want to feel safe. I want my family to be safe. Nah, that they won't allow. Cuomo grants clemency to probably the one person you don't grant clemency to, politically charged murderer. I'd, I, I would understand if it was like, you know, a, a 75 year old uh, drug dealer. I'd be like, well, whatever, you know, I, 75 nonviolent offense, any kind of or money launderer. If Cuomo came out and, and, and pardoned some like money laundering guy or some or Ponzi scheme, I'd be like, yeah, 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 it's all corrupt. But this, this is beyond reproach. This is, this is what happens when the, the, the terrorists are gaining power. They start pardoning their friends and using the power of government to enrich and, and, and empower themselves. Pay attention. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.